So previously, we've spent some time looking at when two variables are related to each other linearly. That is to say that they're related to each other in a straight line. But I want to take the time to focus on a very special type of linear relationship known as direct proportion. Now, if we were to consider our graph, let's, let's just consider a Cartesian plane over here for a moment. We can consider any linear relationship to be a straight line relationship that can go through anywhere along this type of graph. But what makes a relationship that we consider to be directly proportional special is it's not only a linear relationship, but it's a linear relationship that passes through this point here known as the origin. So if we know that two variables are in direct proportion to each other, not only do we know that they're linear related, so it's a straight line relationship, but we also know that it passes through this origin. But to assist us with this, let's consider a situation. Let's say we've got an object that's got a constant velocity of 10 meters per second. And we wanna track how much distance that object is traveling over time. So we wanna track distance over time. Our distance will keep in meters, our time in meters per second. Well, let's just start when the object here is at uh, zero seconds. Now, obviously, if no time has expired, even if our object is moving at a constant speed of 10 meters per second, the total distance that we've tracked so far isn't going to be anything, so it's going to be zero. But after one second, we're going to uh, have our object move 10 meters because it's 10 meters every second. After two seconds, our object's gonna move 10 meters per second. So it's gonna be this 10 meters plus another 10 meters. So a total of 20 meters. After three seconds, it's gonna be three lots of these 10 meters or 30 meters per, uh, in total. And then after four seconds, it'll be four lots, which is 40 seconds. Now, if I was to go ahead and produce a graph of this, just sketching it here, we're gonna have our independent variable on the bottom here, which is our time, and our dependent variable here of our distance. And if we now go ahead and graph this, we can now see that we do in fact have a linear relationship between our variables of distance and time. But it's a very special linear relationship because it actually cuts through the origin here. And when it cuts through this origin, we consider this relationship that we've got to be in direct proportion. So what we say here is our distance here is in direct proportion to our time. So if we labeled this as our x and our y variable, what we're essentially saying is our y is in direct proportion to our x. And this symbol just here just stands for proportional. Now, if we were to consider the equation that represents this sort of relationship of direct proportionality, we already know that any linear relationship can be graphed with this y equals mx plus c if we were to graph it in slope intercept form. But we also know that our c is our y intercept. And in our problem here, if it's in direct proportion, we know it's gonna cut our y axis at the origin, which is when c is equal to zero. So when things are directly proportional, we can represent the equation of it as y equals mx, where if we can find our slope here, we can find the equation of the relationship that has been represented here. But in this situation, rather than referring to this as the slope or the gradient, which it is, when it's in direct proportion, we actually give this slope a new name. We call this the proportional constant. But because we know it's the gradient, we can find this proportional constant in the same way as it would find the gradient of any linear line. So a very handy formula to find this proportional constant often is our slope formula of our slope equals y2 take y1 over x2 take x1, or our rise divided by our run. Now, 
in this, this problem that we've got here, we do actually have several points that we can use. So let's consider these two points in here. Our origin of 0, 0 and our other coordinate of 1, 10 because our 1 is being represented by our x. Now if we were to go ahead and label these, I'm just going to call this my x1, my y1, my x2 and my y2. I can now substitute these values into my formula here to find what the slope is. So we're going to have our slope is equal to our y2 of 10, subtract our y1 of 0, divided by our x2 of 1, subtract our x1 of 0. Now we can see here this is going to be 10 take 0 which is 10, 1 take 0 which is 1, so it's 10 divided by 1, so our proportionality constant here is just going to be equal to 10. So now we can substitute this value back into here and represent an equation that will represent this relationship that we've got between these two variables. So therefore our y can be found by using a proportional constant of 10 multiplied by our x. So to summarise, when we're looking for relationships between two variables, if we've got a linear relationship, we can actually check to see whether we've got a special situation where that linear relationship passes through the origin. If it does pass through the origin of the graph, we say that our two variables are directly proportional to each other, which we represent with this statement here where we say our y is proportional or directly proportional to our x. Then using that information, if we want to find the equation of this, we know that our normal linear relationship is in y-intercept form is y equals mx plus c, but we know because it's directly proportional, our y-intercept is zero. So we've got an equation that's going to be y equals mx, or our gradient multiplied by our x. But we refer to this, when it's directly proportional, this gradient as a proportional constant. And if we can find our proportional constant, we hence find the equation that represents this relationship.